course, as we discuss the things going on in the continent, there's so much more that is happening outside Africa. And there's, uh, you know, something very, very, very frightening happened over the weekend. We have Joe joining us uh, to quickly share details on that. Good morning once again. To Joe. Good morning, guys. Once again, it's uh, good to be back. But this time we're not staying in Africa. Although I would have loved uh, to stay a bit in Africa to ask Osalga and Olive uh, that pronunciation. Uh, that we heard from the South African who I can't do it, but it's but fine. Go ahead. I wouldn't do that to you, Osage. I mean, you're my man. You're my man. You know, you know, I've forgotten already. I, <laughs> I, I can uh, do it on behalf of the uh, both of us. All right, let's go. Let, you want to go? Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Olive. King Misuzulu. The full, the full name. The full name Zulu. and where he's from. King Misuzulu. King Misuzulu Kazueli Tini. Okay. That's, oh, that's nice. From. That's his name. And where's he from? I don't like to share that in public. It's fine. I know you don't like to show yourself off in public. It's okay. It's all right. It's but all right. Alan does very well with pronunciation. I know. I know. She's that smart, you know. <laughs> Aww. Wow. All I right. think both of you have ganged up against me this morning. That's okay. They actually yeah. do very well with pronunciations. You know, I, I, I struggle with pronunciation. I can imagine. Well, let's go outside of Africa right about now. Let's start off with a rather, a rather a shocking story. Authorities in Russia say they have opened a murder investigation after the daughter of um, influential ultra-nationalist philosopher Alexander Dogin was killed by a car bomb on the outskirts of Moscow. The Russian investigative committee believes someone pre-planned and ordered the car explosion that killed um, Adaya Dogina uh, based on evidence already collected from the blast. Now, meanwhile, Ukraine is bracing itself for an intensification of Russian missile attacks to coincide with its Independence Day, which will be on Wednesday in the aftermath of the car bomb killing of the daughter of an ultra-nationalist Russian ideologue. Now, the country's military warned that Russia uh, had put five uh, cruise missile bearing warships and submarines out in the Black Sea and that Moscow was uh, positioning air defense systems in Belarus. Large gatherings have been banned in Kiev for four days from today. So if you go to Kiev, there's no large gathering. If you've got a party, no more. If you've got a wedding, uh, just, just stop. No gathering, that's what it said. But Dugina's father is a Russian author and ideologue credited with being the architect of uh, all spiritual guide uh, to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. He is purported to have significant influence on Russian President Vladimir Putin and was described as Putin's brain by Foreign Affairs magazine. So sad his daughter uh, actually lost her life. Uh, this weekend now she also is a staunch supporter of the russian invasion of ukraine and she has uh, been a staunch supporter from way back following the footsteps of her father uh, she's uh, posted pictures videos and so on and that accident indeed claimed her life uh, a bomb explosion and many have said it was pre-planned but russia's uh, currently carrying out investigations ukraine have come out to say they are not involved they shouldn't be fingered or pointed at as uh, being the cause or planning this um, particular bomb attack but uh, uh, more reports will come out on this story and we are indeed looking forward to hear what the Russians uh, indeed will uncover. Let's move away from that story now. Let's go to another one. This time the United Arab Emirates plans to reinstate its ambassador to Iran for the first time in six years. The Emirati Foreign Ministry have announced as the Gulf Arab Federation accelerates efforts to improve ties with a nation it has long viewed as a regional threat. The Emirates ambassador to Iran, Saif Mohammed Al Zaibi, uh, will return to Tehran in the coming days to continue pushing bilateral relations forward to achieve the common interests of the two neighbors and the region. The UAE's uh, state run WAM news agency also reported this story. Now, the move comes as American and Iranian diplomats now seek to end 16 months of negotiations over the revival of Tehran's landmark nuclear ideal with world powers. Other Gulf Arab states have advocated a detente uh, last week. Uh, Kuwait appointed a new ambassador to Tehran uh, for the first time since 2016. Saudi Arabia similarly worked to cool tensions with Iran in a series of Baghdad medicated um, uh, talks, mediated talks, I beg your pardon. So it just seems that Iran is starting to get things right. They're starting to look forward to have more bilateral relations. And that's exactly what that story is indeed saying. And that's what we have uh, coming from that side of the world. Let's also check out what's also new. The first day of a planned strike at Britain's biggest container port started yesterday, joining a series of walkouts by transportation workers that have disrupted economic activities across the country. Now, almost 2,000 workers at the port 
of uh, Flexwood, located about 150 kilometers northeast of London, walked off the jobs over pay, uh, raising fears of severe supply chain problems. The port handles around 4 million containers a year from 2,000 ships, almost half of the country's in common shipping freight. Sharon Graham, uh, General Secretary of Unite, the labor union that called for the strike, alleged uh, the company that operates the enormously profitable dock and its parent company, C.K. Hutchinson Holding Limited, a prioritized shareholder profits over worker welfare. So it's strike, strike, strike in the United Kingdom. Earlier on, we also heard of the strike of uh, the train workers and they came forward and said they are going on a strike. And now we also have frights and of course the port uh, the workers also signifying their interest. They started their strike yesterday. So this is indeed going to have a strong impact on the UK economy as it stands. Don't forget they've uh, already uh, made their moves after leaving the EU and they're starting to also progress where Nigeria as an African country has equally benefited uh, in the area of especially having to do with uh, shipping goods uh, to the United Kingdom. Uh, and so much more, so much problems uh, right now, especially for the economy. But the question will rely on what will happen if these strikes or industrial actions do continue. Will there be a way to actually have negotiations before it actually skyrockets and spreads across other industries as well? Well, we've seen transportation. We've also seen one that has a strong impact on the economy. But this time, the port is also a big one where uh, a bunch of uh, the economy uh, uh, products and uh, you could say uh, a, a lot of businesses will definitely want to survive on this and this time the strike has indeed started solid yesterday but more updates on this story you can get it here on news central when we bring to you um, updates uh, especially at 1 p.m beyond the continent and don't forget to as well as 8 p.m so that's all i have for you from stories coming from south africa taking you all the way from russia uh, down to um uh, iran and not forgetting to as well stories from the uk Oh, yeah, the uh, the UK, I'm going to start with the UK and then go to Russia. Um, it's, you know, pretty interesting. They also have, uh, I think, railway workers, you know, uh, threatening to go on strike or having, to, or having a protest over the weekend. And now, Absolutely. of course, there's, you know, another, you know, strike that is being threatened. Uh, it doesn't look like the very best times. But, you know, with regards to the, the young lady who was killed in, or assassinated in, in, in Russia, I felt really, really bad, you know, and I'm really worried about what level of escalation this might bring. Um, he, the, her father is said to be uh, uh, Vladimir Putin's brain, basically. He's like, he's like a special advisor to the president. And, you know, a lot of the ideas, you know, from Vladimir Putin, you know, are shared with him. So it maybe was also targeting her father. Nobody knows. Um, but, but, you know, I'm mostly worried about, you know, if there will be retaliation, if there will be um, steps that will be taken to punish whoever the perpetrators are. Um, but well, it's really, really sad. Osago, that's the truth. Um, don't forget that Ukraine will be going to celebrate it um, on Wednesday. Uh, they're looking forward to have that celebration, which of course coincides with that independence where they're looking at celebrating something that uh, means a lot to all Ukrainians. But now the rule has indeed been given uh, by the president saying no celebrations, no parties, no gatherings from Monday all the way through to Thursday. And not just that, but because they smell that um, Russia will look forward to have a strong um, uh, decisions in terms of attacking uh, Ukraine even more, especially now that uh, it has involved the death of one of Putin's main allies. And we're talking about the death that occurred yesterday. His so, daughter, actually, not Yeah, not, not yeah the daughter, the, the daughter, the daughter of, uh, of yeah. one of his main allies. And we're talking about this story uh, it's quite uh, uh, synonymously with what uh, the Ukrainians are indeed saying. They are indeed smelling that this will spike a lot of um, attacks, especially on Ukraine. So that's why they've come out to put their own statement saying they are not terrorists. They are not known for doing that. They do not attack uh, people that way. So they should not be fingered in taking out uh, that uh, bomb blast. I mean, in all of this, all I'm just thinking is I hope that the day will come when we'll see an end to the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Lots of lives have been lost and are still being lost because these two countries that are actually neighboring countries should have probably been one country will not see eye to eye. Lives are being lost, and I hope that in the nearest future, because it started started off recently. You know, it started off. Uh, it, it, it didn't seem like it was going to happen. It's, because, it's, a, it's you know, approaching 100 and, 180 days. Yes, it started and off counting. like before our very eyes, and it's unfortunate to see how many lives have been lost within this time. 
more lives will be lost if this does not come to an end soon. Um, thank you so much, Joe, for sharing with us what's happening outside Africa. Apparently, it's, it's a world struggle. It's not just an African struggle. Absolutely. With the strikes happening as well, whilst we're striking on the continent, they're striking outside the continent. We're all plagued with similar problems, just different expressions.